is going to be the disassembly of an American-made pocket watch. So what we're going to do today is decase, remove the hands, and disassemble the watch and organize the parts. First thing we do is we unscrew the back cover and the front bezel. And I'm going to take the back cover off first. the bezel. That allows us to expose the watch. In the case frame. While it's in the frame, the next thing I'll do is I'll remove the hands. So I use my hand removal tool and we will gently remove the hands. the second hand we're going to use a pry tool to just lift up ever so gently and you're going to lift straight up on that if it doesn't want to come off you could use two tools grab it from each side and gently lift up once it's loose use your tweezers and just place it on the side Okay, so now we've exposed the movement and the dial. We've removed the hands. The next step is to remove the movement from the case. You're going to find the appropriate screwdriver and you'll get to know your screwdrivers. You want the blade to be about three quarters of the width of the screw head, typically. And you're going to remove the two case screws. There's one here and there's one here. We'll remove those. one. I'm going to do this with my left hand even though I'm right-handed so that I can show you on the video. And we'll just take those. Once they're completely loose you put those aside and I keep those close to the case because that way we know those are the case screws. I'm going to pull the stem out to the setting position that loosens it up from the movement and then we're gently going to remove the case off the watch. Place that on the side. <clears throat> Here is our complete American made Waltham Watch Company 17 Joule 16 size movement. This has the balance cock, the train bridge, balance, the, the, the barrel bridge. This is your setting gear and your winding gear right here. Setting gear and winding gear. Okay, next step is to remove the dust cover. The dust cover has, has a complete steel ring that goes all the way around the watch. They're on most watches but not all. There's usually a little tab and a little indent find the tab and you're going to gently lift that away from the front of the movement with your small screwdriver. The ring comes off. Just put that aside with the case. The next step is to remove the watch parts. Remove the watch parts so that they all come off in a specific order and I'll be disassembling them in a specific order that I'm used to. You may have decided that you want to do it a little differently, and that's your prerogative. So let's take a look at let's take a look at disassembling the movement. The first part I start with is the balance cock and balance wheel. I typically remove the screw here. You'll notice the balance wheel is under the main gear or the first gear. And we're going to remove that screw. Very, very gently, the balance cock. Put a little pressure on it with your hand and hold it in place as you're removing the screw. What you don't want to do is have that wobble back and forth. It could damage the balance staff. 
I'm taking the balance screw and putting it aside, the balance cock screw, and now I'm going to gently lift up on the balance cock, pull it out, and place that next to that screw. The next step is to remove the pallet fork holder. This is the pallet fork, and we've gone through that in the parts of a watch. And we're going to remove the pallet fork bridge. Again, you're going to find the appropriate screwdriver for the size of the screw head. And loosen ever so gently. screws that hold that in place. And once it's loose, we're going to gently lift up on that, lift the pallet fork right out and straight, try not to hit anything. This is a good chance to see if we have any power in the spring, and we don't. The spring is released. The next step is to remove the, the setting clutch gear and the winding gear. And we're going to remove those. These both turn counterclockwise to undo them. However, sometimes you will find that you have a reverse thread screw if you do. Be very careful. I've undone that screw. I'm going to put the part there and then gently lift up. You'll see there are several pieces to that. We'll explain those later. Again, we're going to the winding gear and we will undo that. that screw and place it on the side and gently lift up on this. This actually releases the pressure on the spring. And here is the click for the winding and that looks good. There's nothing wrong with it. It springs back good. The next step, we are going to remove this bridge. It's held by three screws. These hold the train in position. And actually, I'm going to leave those in position right now. And we're going to remove the dial. Your dial is held down by three screws, sometimes two. There's one here, one here, and one here. These have to be re released or untightened. And you want to untighten them about maybe two thirds of the way. You don't want to remove those screws from the case. We're going to remove the dial once it's loose. Now the test is to once we've unscrewed those, we're going to find our little notch here. Put our blade under there. And gently lift up. Very gently. You're going to find if you have any pressure anywhere to loosen the screw that's causing the friction. And we don't have any, but we're just going to lift this out. This one is a little tight, we're going to loosen that up a little bit. And our dial will come off. There is our porcelain dial, we'll place that aside. Now there's two gears here. We have the hour wheel, we're going to place that aside, and the minute wheel, and we'll place that aside. Those specifically turn the hands, the hour and minute hands. If you look closely here, we have the cannon pinion on the first gear, and we're going to remove that. You can remove it two ways. Find a flat spot on the case, use bent nose pliers or tweezers, and gently lift up on it. You're going to squeeze and gently lift up. That takes it off. If it comes off very difficult, you can use a cannon pinion puller, and that tool will explain later. That exposes and releases anything holding the first gear in pl pl place. <clears throat> Next step is to remove the train bridge. 
This will expose the first, second, third, and fourth gears. And we are going to loosen these screws ever so gently. Now as you're doing this, if you're doing this the first several times you're taking a watch apart, I suggest using your using a camera and taking photos because then you know how it all goes back together. Now, once these screws have been loosened we're going to lift them straight out and place them aside and the bridge and the screws that hold the bridge will be put and prepped for cleaning in one area so that we know where everything goes together. This exposes the first gear and when we remove that we have the escapement gear or the fourth gear I'm going to take that the second hand will not come out this is the second hand gear or the, the third gear the post or pinion for the second hand goes long through the face or front cover of the case or movement plate yeah. but the second gear came out once the second gear comes out then we can remove the third gear this is our mainspring. It's being held in place by the mainspring bridge or the barrel bridge, however you want to refer to it. It's called a lot of different things. We'll just refer to it as the barrel bridge. Now I'm going to loosen the three screws that hold this in place very, very gently. Remember, never apply a lot of pressure to your screwdriver. You just want to loosen it up and then turn it. You don't want to push down on it. You don't want to force the screws in or out. Once they're all loosened, use your tweezers and gently lift up on the screws and place them aside. And then with the screws, we're going to place this bridge so that we know which bridge and which screws go together. Gently grab it with your tweezers, lift straight up. The reason you're going to lift straight up is because each of the bridges has a little post. The post is right here. See it? And then that falls into a specific place. I'm going to place the bridge next to its screws. Now we've exposed the mainspring barrel. And this barrel is a two-piece barrel doesn't get tightened up and that has to be prepped for cleaning. This is the clutch. This clutch allows us to set and wind the watch and you'll see there's a little pinion in here. We push on that pinion and it moves the clutch back and forth. And that, this is the winding position and that's the setting position of the clutch. So as we turn these we articulate certain gears. Setting position, winding position. Setting position, winding position. This will come right out. So I'm going to gently remove that. This is four pieces. So four pieces are like so. Cleaned. This is the clutch spring, and in this case, we'll remove this screw, take the spring out, and these little pieces will come off. Back on the front, now that we've gotten all the parts off the watch, I'm going to tighten up each of the dial screws to keep them tight in the case. They're in the front plate or top plate of the movement so that we do not lose these screws. You will never be able to replace them. And if you don't have at least two of them, the dial will move around and cause the watch to run erratically. And there we have the disassembly of our pocket watch. And it is getting ready to be prepped for cleaning. 
Thanks guys for watching part one of the 16 size pocket watch service. This was the disassembly section. The next time we'll be going through the parts and then cleaning the watch. And if you like this, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you can, give us some support on Patreon. Uh, your donations help to uh, keep us going and buy me coffee. Take care and have a good day.